Hey, it's Mr. Reyes here, and I'm excited to announce that Dynamic and I are going to be collaborating and bringing you an amazing cover-up seminar. And the seminar is going to be here at Dynamic Studios, happening in October 26, 2024. And this is the area that I'm going to be teaching you everything I know and everything I've learned in the last eight years of experience. Limited tickets are available, so make sure to purchase your ticket ahead of time. And I can't wait to meet you. Let's go! Okay, so we are on day two. I'm about to continue tattooing this project on the thigh. Uh, the piece is dedicated to Cuatlicue. And uh, I was trying to figure out what part of this tattoo I wanted to explain, but uh, I feel like most of the headdress, which in Spanish it would be el, uh, el penacho, um, I feel like this is very self-explanatory. There's not a lot of technique. It's a lot of black and a lot of following the shapes. So I think it's a better a better place for me to kind of go over the way I do things is the eye. I, even though uh, maybe a lot of you might know how to do it, or maybe you might pick up a few tricks that I'm uh, that I'm using. So, and we're also gonna keep continuing. Ex I'm gonna keep continuing explaining the story and the history behind Coatlicue because there's a lot of things to unpack. And again, on, the, on day two, I'm still using this machine, the Fury machine, and uh, amazing. I love the way it's, it's making my tattoo look. As you can see, it's very solid. So yeah, this is, this is honestly one of those things that I am really happy with this product. So let's jump in to the way I'm doing this, the, the eye. I am using a 7 mile liner at the moment, and I'm running at a 5.0 voltage. I'm, I'm sorry, a 6 right now. And uh, and I'm just layering up this the top eye, the top of the eyelid, just so it can be a little bit thicker. It gives you a little bit more personality. Perfect. And I will also start doing more like a, a drop shadow underneath the teeth of the snake. Now, let's jump right in with the history. So the way I customized this project was really basing it off Cuatlicue. As we explained yesterday, I told you guys the history behind her and the history of the children, which is Lopochtli, um, Coyol Shauki, and the uh, 14 kids of the, or uh, the 14, uh, for the 14 star, 400 stars. My bad, I was dipping in my machine, so I lost my thought. Okay, so let's jump right in into why I decided to do the headdress the way I did. So, the headdress is actually a, a very similar to the actual statue that is located in Mexico of Coatlicue. And the description of it is that it is two snakes facing each other. So this is supposed to be half snake and this is a, the other half of the snake. It's a rattlesnake, which that is one of the snakes that is located in Mexico as well. Um, so the reason why there is two snakes facing each other it is because it is connected to how does como se dice el cosmo the cosmo in english cosmo cosmo like the universe el cosmo oh damn it's the same thing okay el cosmo it is it is basically uh connected to it now the reason why they the snake is located on the top it is because they believe that that is uh the sky okay the snakes are are connected to the sky and an interesting fact about, or the way I customize it is, you see this little symbol here on the middle of, of the two snakes. That is the symbol of the moon. And the most interesting, interesting thing about that is that the moon in, is associated with Koyol Shauki, which is Wichilopochtli's sister, as we learned yesterday. Um, so that is why I decided to add the moon in the middle of the snakes, so to give it a little bit more meaning and more connected to the history and the, and the children she had. So that is why I added the moon right in the middle. And also these two little symbols here, like you remember, like I said right now, the snakes are associated with the sky. So these two little symbols in the middle, they represent the wind. The wind, I pronounced it right, the wind? Because I don't want to make it sound like 
like wings, wings, win, the win. Okay, win. And, <laughs> and uh, so that is why I decided to add it there, just kind of more associated with the history behind it. Um, another interesting thing about the statue is that she wears uh, a necklace that has hands and hearts. Before I continue explaining, I switch to my uh, nine curve mag and I'm gonna slowly brush it that exactly how I did yesterday. And since my highlight is coming from this corner, then I'm going to just play around with, uh, with the contrast here and see what I can do to make it stand out. Let's see, perfect. I don't wanna go too dark either, cause if I go too dark, then yeah, it's just not gonna stand out. The darkest point is already on the other side of the face. So I don't wanna do that. Perfect. Let's see. Look at how smooth that goes in. I'm gonna leave that for now on that corner cause I wanna start building up the contrast here before I move to the highlight area. I just wanna get an idea of how dark I can make the face look and close to the, to the nose so I can figure out how dark I can do this corner. So it's mostly just visuals and because as you guys remember how I explained yesterday, I hand drew the whole entire thing, so I'm not going based on a reference. I'm just making it up as I go and filling in the, the shading where I feel like it's going to look best and complement my client's uh, tie. That way it stands out from afar. Okay, so the necklace of Cuatlicue. It is composed by four hands and two hearts. And it is not just random why she has those. There is a lot of connection to, uh, to everything that the Mexicas stand by and what they represent. So Cuatlicue has two hearts to represent life because she is the one who gave birth to uh, a lot of the, uh, the people, the humanity, especially 400 stars, one moon, one sun. It's insane, right? So she is the reason why uh, there is a uh, reproduction uh, and all that. It's really hard to explain it in English. Um, but that's the reason why she has two hearts to represent life. Now the hands, that's where it gets super interesting because the hands are connected to the cosmos and also uh, connected to the universe, uh, the hands. And uh, the hands in Spanish, they would call them um, Quintanas. I don't know how to pronounce that in English, but Quintanas are basically what the hands represent. And, uh, and the hands are a reflection. That's what they mean to signify, a reflection. And it also connected to the five suns, like uh, Tlaloc, Tezcatlipoca, Huichilopochtli, Quetzalcoatl, like basically all the gods that that they were once uh, the sun, uh, which is the center of our whole entire galaxy. That is why it is very important why the hand represents that, because it is one of the most powerful things that a god can represent, the sun. So the five hands, it is a reflection of us, and it is connected to a mirror, because we can see our reflection. So that leads me to the next god, his name is Tezcatlipoca. It is the brother of Huichilopochtli. I'm, I'm sorry. It is the brother of Quetzalcoatl, the feather serpent. They fought a monster called Zipatli, and it looks like an alligator, right? And uh, Tezcatlipoca was a warrior, so he ended up amputating his own foot to lure, lure, lure lure uh, the monster towards them because he was just swimming in the cosmos in the universe so as soon as they got the chance they killed Sipakli and they made him they they used his body to create the whole entire world the you know the 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 ocean the ground the the plants uh, the underworld everything right and I'm gonna lose you on this one, but try to keep up with me. Sipatli, it is the son of, of uh, Miklatecutli. Who is Miklatecutli? 
the God of the underworld. It's not meant to be evil. It's just the underworld where our, where our souls go after we die. Right? You might be wondering who is the mother of Sipatli if Miklatekutli is the father. That would be Miktekasiwaltl. She is the wife of Miklatekutli. She also rules the underworld. And she is the reason why we celebrate uh, Day of the Dead today in Mexico and all over the world. It's a, it's a worldwide event, our, our holiday that everybody celebrates, right? Day of the Dead. She is the reason we have that because of uh, she represents the dead and she makes sure that we make it to the other side. So she's, she's good, right? Okay, so I don't want to go too deep into their story because it is really intense. It is a lot of information behind that. But going back to the hands of Coatlicue, as we know, we, it represents Tezcatlipoca because they represent the reflection of who we are. For our ancestors, um, for our ancestors, they believe that a reflection of ourselves is what makes us. Nobody in this world can tell us who we are except ourselves. So we are in control of our personality, our values, our morals as a person. So that is why Cuatlicue has the hands facing outwards because it is up to us to determine who we are and what we contribute in the world. Uh, so whatever we reflect is who we are. So, it is very deep, it is a very deep explanation but uh, to understand why it connects but I'm just giving you, you know, like the surface, the surface so we can, you know, go deeper in future videos, right? So with that, uh, what I also want to highlight with Cuatlicue is that there's also another person, oh, what I'm going to be doing here on this corner because it is uh, a lot of contrast here, I want to start with a uh, I, uh, the eye bag, very lightly. I don't wanna, I'm actually gonna switch to my 15 curve mat. It's gonna give me a softer look, or not a softer look, but more like an even. So I'm just gonna go very lightly, barely touching. And I'm gonna leave a little open gap between the eyelid and so it can make it look like the eye is curving a little bit, give it that three dimensional look. So as you can see, I'm barely moving very slowly and I'm still running it at six, very lightly, and I'm kind of cross hatching so it creates a smoother blend. Okay, perfect. So, um, going back to Cuatlicue, because she is the mother of, you know, us, the reproduction, there's also another goddess that is very similar to her. Uh, she is called uh, Tonazzi. Now, Tonazzi, it's a whole different goddess, but very similar to Cuatlicue, and it's very important to highlight this because some people can get confused with, uh, with both goddesses, and they're different. So, Tonazzi, it is basically the Virgin Mary before the Spaniards brought La Virgen de Guadalupe to Mexico. So this is way before. Uh, Tonazzi is basically uh, she was located in El Tepeyac, okay? In El Tepeyac, all the, the, the Mexicas used to pray and make sure that they were, you know, respectful because she was protecting them in every single way. They believed that. And, uh, but as Hernán Cortés, when he invaded uh, Mexico in close to the 1500s, uh, and then they, they took over in, um, what is it, um, 1520. That's when they finally conquered the whole entire uh, Mexica Empire. So that's when they said, okay, now you guys are gonna pray to us. And oh my bad, brother, I wiped too hard, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad. But, um, so, I got distracted. I, I got a little too into the story and I, and I just started wiping, bro. <laughs> okay, so I hope I'm not losing you guys, but I know because it's a lot of information, I know. And just in case you guys want to do your own research, look for Diego Duran. 
he started telling the stories back in 1530. That means 10 years later after Hernan Cortes took over. So it is, in, it is precise to the anecdotes of the Mexicas. Thanks to Diego Duran, we know a lot of the history. Also, there's another person. I think his name is Eduardo Moctezuma II. The amazing archaeologist that he's dedicated his whole life to learning about the Mexica culture and the Mayans. Amazing. But as in right now, you got me <laughs> to, to deliver the information. Um, so, Tonazzi was the original Virgin Mary before Hernan, Corte, Hernan Cortes brought uh, Christianity to Mexico. He didn't like the fact that they were praying to another person or another god or goddesses or uh, deity. So he said, no, 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 I'm going to destroy the temple of Tonazzi and El Tepeyac, the mountain where she was located, and rebuild the, the temple for Virgen de Guadalupe. And that's when they brought in the story of Juan Diego, who they said, oh, he was walking through and he saw the Virgin Mary and then asked him to go get the, you know, you guys know the story of how the Virgin Mary was found. But uh, El Tepeyac is actually dedicated to Tonazzi. But yes, I hope I'm not losing you guys. It's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, information. And uh, if you guys need to watch this video a few times, do it. <laughs> But it is, it, I can go in depth with that story, but this is about Cuatlicue, so I'm going to go back to her because I'm going to start rambling and yeah, it's going to get more confusing. Let's see, what's another thing about... Uh, oh, okay, so I was talking about the reflection of ourselves. So it's not just the hands that represent the reflection, but also the whole statue of Cuatlicue is a reflection as well. So the front side of Cuatlicue, it is the same thing in the back of the statue. Um, so it's very interesting the fact that the Cualticue also represents the reflection of herself. Um, so the statue was found and they couldn't believe the fact that they, they had that. They, they were able to preserve that. But um, yes, as in right now what I'm doing is pretty much just looking over to make sure that I'm not going too dark. So far I'm loving the conscious underneath the teeth. So I'm going to enhance it a little bit more just to take out this little highlight right here in the middle. It's a little too harsh for me, so I'm gonna minimize it just a little bit. And being very careful, because this is the brightest point of the nose, so I do not want to compromise it. So I'm just gonna take my time very lightly. Boom. Perfect. Maybe a little bit less, just to give it less brightness. I do like it a lot, but I feel like if I was to make it skinnier, it would just, Give it a little bit more personality. Yep, I'm starting to see it. I love high contrast because I feel like it heals the best. And as I as explained yesterday, I, uh, I'm using nothing but solid black, no tones, no nothing, no drop system. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm really taking my time on this and making sure that it stands out um, with nothing but solid black. There it is. That little highlight just definitely makes it happen. And I'm gonna go into the eye and start blending it in. I'm gonna switch to my nine curve mag and slowly build it. This is the brightest point of the eye, so I'm barely gonna drop the shadow just enough. Just so it's not like fully white because it's not gonna make it look realistic. I'm gonna go in here too, erase a little bit of that darkness. I'm sorry, I'm gonna enhance the darkness here because it is the farthest point of the highlight. And here, I'm barely gonna touch it, so I'm just gonna work around it very slowly work around the pupil but it's definitely getting there there you go but yes um, it's really important to really know the history of a specific culture because I, I actually it's not just the Aztec culture or the Mayans that I know, I actually also expand 
uh, spend time learning about other cultures as far as like uh, the Japanese. Uh, I love the uh, Egyptians, Greek mythology. I feel like that's more information that it's out there a little bit more. Uh, so I do focus more on the ones that are a little bit more rare. Uh, the, or not rare, I would say that people wouldn't think about learning about just because I feel like it would help me learn a little bit more about other cultures if I learned that specific one. So it's a, it's a weird thought that I have, but I like to learn a little bit more. Like the Buddhism, you know, I, I love that. I love the history of that with Siddhartha, you know, and the first ever Buddha, which by the way, a Buddha is not a person. It's, an, it's not a specific person, it's, it's just a person that gets reincarnated into another person. So Buddha is not one, it's many. Um, and also, Buddhism is not a religion, it's a practice. And it was a lot of the things that they used to practice was uh, learn from uh, Hinduism. So they made it into its own practice. Uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Also, I don't know if you guys heard, but Buddhism is basically the main purpose is to reach nirvana and honestly it's a very sad goal in my opinion because the main goal to reach nirvana is to die and never come back because their punishment is if you die and you get reincarnated that means that means that you didn't reach nirvana because they see life as a suffering journey they don't see it as a beautiful thing they see life as a okay i'm rambling <laughs> i gotta stop okay going back to what i'm doing today uh, I'm gonna start by blacking it out here and start getting the idea of how bright I can make the pupil look. In Spanish, it's la niña de mis ojos, la niña. Um, so yeah, uh, still using nothing but solid black, black. Boom. And I'm gonna fade it out. I definitely wanna keep that highlight because I wanna make it look like there's some sort of light shining through the the eyeball Oof. thank you so much for coming back and watching this brand new video really appreciate you and um yeah i'm really happy that you guys are liking these videos i mean uh, it makes me really happy so i'm going to be making more of these uh is there a specific thing that you want me that you guys want me to explain drop it down in the comments and let me know but with that being said uh if you're an artist what <laughs> So with that being said, if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.